this is the headquarters people. These are the people that you need to be able to voice your opinion to, you need to call, you need to have a free line of communication with. We need a full-time chair, an executive director, a finance director, a statewide political director. Not on here, but what we need is a communications director. We've had it. We don't have the budget for it right now, but we need to have someone in-house doing it. Field office is in 2010. Wouldn't you love to have a field office up here? That's a mass GOP office. Weekly goals for candidates and volunteers, and goals for town committee organizations and growth for, by 2010. Our technology, continue our efforts at modernizing, seek cutting edge technology pilot programs, continue building our database, and have those more voter volunteers. <coughs> Building our farm team, we need to energize our grassroots and connect everyone with our new media messaging. New media messaging, blogs, basic, easy, you know, texting, email, just get our message out there. We need to enlist something that hasn't happened, our former candidates, our former leaders, as mentors. People that lost, I was talking to someone last night, who lost 48%. That's really good. I mean, he has something going for him. You know, get these people back to do training. How about getting our former governor or former treasurer, former, you know, whoever it is, former rep, former senator, and say to them, you know what, we were good to you. We helped you keep your position. We need you to come back and do some training for people now. Professional assistance is fundraising, media, and outreach. That means bringing in consultants or bringing people, not necessarily spending the money on them, but bringing people in who have been involved, who have done these jobs, and say to them, we need your help and we need you to volunteer and teach these people what to do. And also raise funds earmarked for candidate support. Actually raise money to support our candidates. Competitive candidates. Analyzing and prioritizing districts based on historical trends. No more of this 106 candidates running and, you know, who cares? Someone will win. Well, it doesn't. It, it never has and never will. But you know what? There is low-hanging fruit out there. There are state reps that have made the mistake of saying in the media that they are no longer seeking their position. We need to go after them. The ones that were just elected, I was with a couple of the women this morning at an event. Let me tell you, I don't know how we didn't win the first time around. They are not charismatic, they are nasty, and they just do not know what they are doing. And those are the people that we need to go after. Um, identify, that's the identifying open seats in the vulnerable districts, and immediately begin recruiting 2010 candidates. You know what doesn't work? Finding candidates in July of election year to then run for office in November. That is not a winning strategy. We need to start now finding people and telling them Here's what you have to do. Get on your local board. Find a local commission. Find something that you can start getting active with. Charity, your library, your PTA, whatever it is, get involved. Voter registration. I mean, this is a tough one. We're Republicans in Massachusetts, right? We don't give up, though. We have to empower and give incentives to our local committees and our activists. We also may need to, at some point, contract for services to do voter registration with not ACORN, but actually a reputable company. Our message. Does anyone know? Does the Republican Party have a message right now? Does anyone have an answer? We don't have a message. Now, how does anyone join any sort of organization that doesn't have a message? You go to your local Boys and Girls Club, you know what the message is. You go to the YMCA, you know what the message is. You go to your school, you know what the message is. You go to the Republican Party, no message. We need to work on that. We need to all come together and say, here are our suggestions for what our message is. Right now, you know what the message is? It is so simple. Boston Globe, 
We can't have that. What's our message right now? Our message is corruption on Beacon Hill, the Democratic contingency up there. It's corrupt. We don't want to say it's corruption all over Beacon Hill because we still have, you know, whatever, 1% of the legislature. We have 21 members up there of the 200. Um, so we can't say everyone is corrupt, but we have to sit there and say the Democratic Party is corrupt, and this is why we need a two-party system. Today, I met, I was at a breakfast with Martha Copley, and I went up to her and I introduced myself. And you know what she said to me? Was, good luck to you, because you need to work on a two-party system and having a voice. They even recognize that we need a two-party system. We need to establish our policy priorities and get input from the legislature, from our activists, from the state committee members, from everyone together to say what issues we're forgetting with. We need to also get, deliver daily messages about Governor Patrick and the Democratic Party and tell people that there is an alternative, which is the Republican Party. We have to hold them accountable, and we need someone who's going to be a voice, a strong voice, a loud voice, and not give up on attacking them. We have to apply the KISS principle to our communication. Just keep it simple. Again, corruption, that's it. That's all we really need to say right now. We need to use the bully pit of the chairperson to create weekly press events, and we need to identify and transfer it to echo the party message in communities, and go to your media, go to the local press, and tell them exactly what is going on. You know what's going on in your district. You know who your reps are. You know who your senators are. You probably know their dirty little secrets. Go out. Don't be scared. Go talk to the media. And we need to build coalitions with think tanks and like-minded groups on issues that we all agree on. We need to continue the modernization and the um, communi and our communication efforts, blogs, online videos, <coughs> message boards, slack emails, and maybe take a little bit of the green concept and have electronic newsletters. Finally, we need outreach. That's important. I mean, again, we're you know we're in New England. We're always we're always said you know the Northeast, the Northeast, the Northeast, New England. Okay, fine. Why don't we have a New England GOP where we outreach to our other counterparts, we expand our fundraising base, attract top level speakers to Massachusetts, expand the volunteer base. We went to New Hampshire. Why can't New Hampshire come to us? Share our policies and best practices with them, and start team building, networking, and morale building. I've already spoken to some folks from New Hampshire. They want to work with us. They want to come here and help us. They're pretty even. We need to start doing that. I've spoken to folks from Rhode Island. I'm trying to get in touch with people from Maine. I've talked to people from New York. I mean, why don't we start reaching out and saying, what works for you? How are you successful? I was on the phone with a couple of other state party chairmen trying to figure out around the nation, what is the most successful thing that you have done? How do you empower people? How are people excited about being Republican? We need to also develop alliances with other coalition groups. Social conservatives, fiscal conservatives, second amendment groups, school choice, small business, young professionals, think tanks, trade groups. You know what the Democrats do? They've got every single union in that you can ever imagine. They're part of their state committee. Their state committee meetings are about 300 325 people because everyone is involved. We should have every group involved. The benefit to us is that we have candidates that develop a base of support.